when I had the opportunity to visit Motoyot Asteria in London during an open day for charter brokers like myself, I couldn't pass up the chance to bring my camera along. Today I'm excited to take you, my subscribers, on a tour of this remarkable explorer yacht. This award-winning 49 meter or 160 foot long-range explorer yacht began life in 1969 as an ocean-going salvage tug. With her incredibly strong hull, excellent sea keeping abilities and impressive range, she's perfectly suited for expeditions to far-flung corners of the globe. After a recent refit, this timeless classic is ready for what promises to be a busy charter season. Welcome back to the channel. You join me in a sunny London aboard one of my favorite Explorer yachts. I've really been looking forward to coming on board this boat and showing you around. I've only got about 30 minutes. There are other charter brokers and guests on board, so I'm gonna have to dodge them as I show you around. But I promise you, you will be seeing all the main areas. But before we do have a look around, please don't forget to give the video a like, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's really important. It's the first thing that boat owners look at shipyards look at how many subscribers i've got so if you can subscribe i'll appreciate it but let's crack on with the yacht tour if you own a super yacht this really is the best place in london to come and visit as i only live 30 minutes away from here it also means that i can come and feature your boat on my youtube channel today i'm on board asteria a true explorer yacht. i've been on board now for a few hours uh, i've been shown around by the owner and the captain and it's a boat that I've been following for a long time and it's one that I've wanted to get on board for a long time uh, and I'm really looking forward to showing you around this very, very capable Explorer yacht. Of course, starting on the main deck aft, I have a great seating area over here. Uh, the owner was telling me that he spends a lot of time here with his family. It's a great place to be on board, to enjoy that fantastic view, especially when you're underway and you're protected from the elements tucked away down here. As you can see, we've got a seating area over there on the port side, and of course, all of the main bollards as well. As you can see at the moment, we're actually tied up to a buoy. Uh, we've got a buoy aft and another buoy off the bow. I'll show you that in a second. Now, as I walk around, there are other charter brokers on board at the moment, so I might not be able to show you all of the areas, but I'm gonna try and show you as much as possible. Here we have another fantastic seating area large sofa over here. I'd almost call this a movie theater, really. Uh, of course, big windows, so we've got lots of natural light coming into this area. And of course, check out that huge TV. Look at the size of that, a true movie theater. Uh, the footage that you can see at the moment was actually filmed by the owner. Uh, and I think, to be honest, that is some pretty good drone shots. Right, let's continue forward into a more formal dining area here. Of course, you can see the big dining table in the middle. You comfortably see 10 people around this dining table. And again, look, large windows over there on the port side, giving you a great view of London. HMS President over there. And those of you who subscribe to my channel will know how much of an affiliation I feel to anything Royal Navy or Matlow affiliated. So yeah, it's quite a special moment to be on board this boat in the Thames right next to HMS President. In fact, I'll show you that mirror, I'll chop off a Royal Navy salute for you. There we go. Right, so let's move forward now. I'm not gonna go into the galley, but that galley is over there on the port side. After the other guests left, I did manage to have a look around the galley because I knew that you, my subscribers, probably would not forgive me if I didn't show you in here. Uh, they've been cooking up some fantastic food for us today. And over here, look, if I show you on the starboard side deck, Actually, if I walk back here, again, look, check out that view. If you own a boat and you're thinking of somewhere to go in London, this is the perfect place to tie up. Behind this door, have all the dive equipment. I open this up. Yeah, check out that. I mean, I'm not uh, exactly a pro when it comes to diving, but I'm sure many of you who are watching this are. 
uh, and you'll know exactly how serious all this gear is in there. Right, let's shut that back up, head back on to the main deck and we'll continue forward. So I can show you some of the cabins. Another entrance over there on the port side into the galley over here on the starboard side. Have a day head, one of the day heads. As we move forward, take you into the first cabin, which is a twin cabin. Uh, and again, the owner was telling me this cabin can be very popular on board because she's a midships. Uh, and when you're in the rough stuff, this is a great place to get some decent sleep because you've got less motion from the boat uh, as she's plowing through those big seas, which is exactly what this boat is obviously designed for. Of course, we have the ensuite with a shower. Now, I'm not going to call that a sink because in my last video I did, and somebody pointed out it's not a sink, it's a hand basin. So there we have a hand basin. And of course, the study area over there as well. Let's head back out, continue forward. I'm trying to remember what's in here. Ah, this is storage for the luggage. So when this boat is on charter, all the luggage can be stowed away in here. I can imagine that is quite handy for the crew rather than having to sink down into the lower decks to go and retrieve and stow away all the luggage. So yeah, that's a nice touch. But look, as you walk around here, as you can see there's plenty to hold on to when you're making a way around the boat during rough weather transits. So over here on the port side, another cabin of course, and you can if you want to either use this as a double or as a single. Got the reading lights on the bulkhead there, and obviously all of your sockets for your electrical items such as your iPad, you can plug all them in obviously. And of course, you've got three large portholes. So again, lots of natural light coming into this area, plenty of space. Another area where you can set up your laptop and crack on with your work when you're underway. And of course, this cabin does have an ensuite as well. Another hand basin over there on the port side. Another large porthole. You cannot open these portholes. Uh, something to do with the classification or the class of the boat, so you can't actually open them up. But as you can imagine, all of the cabins on this boat benefit from air conditioning and from heating as well. And it's a very quiet boat. Obviously a big, thick steel hull, uh, really, really well-built superstructure, pretty much everywhere on board is very, very quiet and very comfortable. So of course over here on the starboard side, another double cabin. Another work area over there. And again, look, three large portholes. And I'll show you the ensuite again. So just as a reminder, as a walking around, this boat was built in 1969. And when she was built, uh, she was an ocean going salvage tug. So I love the fact that we're seeing more boats like this that are currently on the Explorer Yacht fleet uh, that have been repurposed from boats that would have otherwise been sent to the scrapyard. And what an amazing job they have done during the refit. So I'll show you first the ensuite to this cabin. Again, another porthole over there. Hand basin, not a sink. And it was spin around, plenty of storage space in here. And here we have another double cabin. And you can just start to notice the curvature of the hull now as we're moving towards the bow of the boat. But again, we've got three large portholes over there on the starboard side. And I'll show you the cabin over on the port side, but it's pretty much the same layout as that cabin. But here we go, another double. There's lots of headroom in all of these cabins as well. I'd probably say maybe about seven, seven feet of headroom, hazard the guess. Look, all your sockets over there for all your electrical gadgets or whatever else you're gonna be bringing on board during your charter. I'm gonna spin around now. Head back aft, and here we go. Look, I'll show you the ensuite for this cabin as well. As I say, we've got a lot of boats to cover and not much time. So I don't want to give you motion sickness. I'm going to try and pan as little as possible as I reorientate myself. Let's head back aft. And I'm pretty sure if we keep going, well, let's send up these stairs because up here is where we will find the master cabin. So, turn left, 
We have another large saloon in here as well. Serving area over there on the port side. Again, some more seating over there on the port side. Large windows, again, allowing lots of natural light into this area. And of course, if you want to, you can shut those blinds so you can darken this area down. But again, over there, look, all that seating over there on the starboard side, some more modular seating amidships. And there is another view of the bar. Right, that's one of the tenders on the port side deck. We'll have a better look at that in a moment. But first, oh, <laughs> how are you doing? Let's jump out here actually. There we go. Again, another tender deck over here on the starboard side. As you can see at the moment, we currently have no fewer than three ribs here. Uh, so the main tender, the tender that brought us on board, that is where the main tender is normally stowed. And these ribs are actually stowed up on the helicopter landing pad. And we'll go up there in a second. But first, let me take you up to the bow. And here is where we get access into the owner's cabin as well. But yeah, check out this. This is a view that you definitely want to see. So if you are on this boat on charter and you happen to stumble across some wows and you want to get a good look at them, you just step up here, look, step up these three steps and you get a fantastic view. There's the other boy, obviously, that we're tied to. And look, I'll give you a quick second to take in the scenery of Tower Hamlets. There's HMS President again. Obviously, City of London over there. Over there is St. Catherine's Dock, a very, very nice marina over there as well. If you've got a smaller boat and you're looking for somewhere to come and visit when you're in London, St. Catherine's Dock, which is over there, the entrance is over there, is a fantastic place to come and stay. And over there, obviously, have the Isle of Dogs, Canary Wharf. But yeah, South London over on the starboard side and North London over on the port side. Let me just spin around again so I can show you the superstructure. Portuguese bridge all the way around the bridge. And notice as well, they do have a spotlight on the port side. Another one over there on the starboard side as well. But we're going to go up to the sun deck in a minute. But first, let me take you back down aft. And let you can really notice the shear on this boat as well as we head back aft to find the entrance from the main deck into the owner's cabin which is right here. There we go. Open this up, quickly show you in here. Here we have the full beam owner suite. Again, loads of deck space in here. Massive queen size bed, big retractable TV over there on the bulkhead there. And of course, what a view. What a fantastic view you get. Of course, as you would expect, being the master cabin. I love the LED feature there, the LED light feature recessed into the overhead. Nice lounging area over there on the port side. And let's head aft and I'll show you into the ensuite. Walk-in wardrobe here, so plenty of space, both hanging locker space and drawer space over here as well. And uh, this is the owner's ensuite. So a massive shower there. When I was walking around with the owner a little bit earlier on, he was telling me that he was thinking about turning that into a haman, which I think is a fantastic idea. Obviously, you have a bath over there, double sinks, or oh, sorry, double hand basins. <laughs> Must never call them a sink. I was like, I'll get called out for that in the comments. Let's head back into the vast owner's suite. And I'm going to spin around. I'm going to show you where the owner's two sons stay in this beautiful cabin here. But no fewer than four large vertical windows in here. But yeah, what a great place for the two sons of the owner. And in case you are wondering, if your offspring have a tendency to argue like mine, you can close this door, slides across so that can shut. And obviously you can shut that as well. But I love the fact that the owner when they get up in the morning, the owners can come out onto the starboard side deck through that door there. Right, so let's reorientate myself. Let me take you up onto the wheelhouse now. What's in here? I can't remember. Ah, more storage. Yeah, let's take you up into the business end 
of this beautiful Explorer yacht. Here we have the wheelhouse, the vast wheelhouse. We'll check this out. One of the things I love about this wheelhouse is that you've still got the traditional ship's wheel there. And of course, check out that view. You can see the Portuguese bridge running all the way around the wheelhouse, a U-shaped seating area over here on the starboard side. So a great place to come and sit and watch events as they unfold whilst you're underway. And look, we've even got the original telegraph look, on that bulkhead. If I step out here onto the starboard side deck, you get another view of it. There's one of the two spotlights I was telling you about. In fact, instead of going through the bridge, just go across the Portuguese bridge. Check that out and look, we'll have another look at the bow. Really, really spacious, really wide Portuguese bridge. Now the docking station over there on the port side. In fact, whilst we're up here, let me take you down and show you. This is the port boat deck, obviously. Beautiful tender there. Custom made tender. How are you doing? Where are you off to? Where are you going? Calais. Calais? Calais, we're refugees, head off. Good luck. Nice Cheers. <laughs> Some locals there going for a paddle. Right, let's go up onto the sun deck. Wow, yeah, look at this. Of course, we've got the jacuzzi there. Loads of seating up here, lots of seating over there on the port side, over there on the starboard side as well. But look, check this out for a view. Look at this. Let's sit down and show you what it looks like. Of course, it does have a bimini up here, but the bimini is off at the moment. But yeah, if you do want to come up here and uh, escape the sun, then you can, of course, put the bimini across. But yeah, check out this view. In fact, if I stand up. Got about two hours now until sunset, so yeah, it's a really nice time to be up here filming. And there is the boat's tender taking some of the guests back alongside, and I will probably be on the next one. So, got to wrap this up fairly quickly. Check out that huge radar mast there, massive spotlight, two nav radars. It does have the satellite uh, domes on this boat. And as you probably noticed, we've got one of the Starlink antennas there and another one over there on the starboard side. Right, let's head back. I'm conscious of the fact we've not been down in the engine room yet and I really want to show you down there. It's got a feature that I hardly ever see on boats. And those of you who watch this who are a bit more marine engineering minded than I am, you'll definitely appreciate the features I'm talking about when we head down there. As you can see, helipad, touch and go helipad. At the moment, all the modular seating's all been set out. So you can pretty much turn this area into what you want it to be, depending on how the boat is being used. But yeah, look, you get another really good view of the superstructure there. Two of the jet skis over there on the starboard side some sailing boats stowed away over there on the port side. If I head aft, and look, give you another view of just what that looks like there. But yeah, check that out. As you're looking and taking in that beautiful sight, in my mind, I'm gonna have to try and map how we get down into the engine room. Okay, all right, let's first of all head forward. And I think what we will do is just peel off to the port side. The crew as well do an absolutely fantastic job of keeping this area absolutely spotless. Let's go back into the bridge quickly and I'll just show you the helm position. So of course, multifunction display over there on the left hand side Furuno radar display, throttle control levers there for the single engine, another multifunction display over there on the starboard side. And then we have obviously a couple of the CCTV cameras that we can see. The uh, Simrad control there, all your BNG electronics, bow and stern thruster controls, searchlight controls over there as well. 
But yeah, check this out. And look, behind is where we have the comm station. So look, loads of VHF, depth sounder over there. But yeah, a proper ship built for proper cruising. And look, they even did Northwest Passage. They got their plate for the Northwest Passage. If you want to read that, you can freeze that and have a look. But my mission to find the engine room continues. Captain's cabin here. I'm not going to go in there and start poking around, but that is the captain's cabin. Let's descend back down these steps and show you the engine room, if I can find it. Okay, so let's spin around, walk down these steps. I always like to talk as I'm walking through the boat, just so that people know I'm coming. So if they don't want to be on camera, they can quickly hide as we make our way. Right, so entrance to the luggage room, cabin again over there. That's the entrance to the galley. Back out onto the side deck. Okay, as you can probably guess, <laughs> it is typical. Maybe next time I need to come on board with a map. Okay. Ah, yes, here we go, right. Engine room, let's take you down there and have a quick look around. And that is where we will finish this yacht tour. Again, look, this is where the crew can come and do their thing, the laundry. And plenty of washer dryers on here. And we spin around, head back out here. That is one of the cabins over there on the starboard side. But look, here we have dry storage. And in here, a massive freezer. Massive walk-in freezer, check that out. Oh, it's nice in there. Very tempted to go in there for a couple of minutes, but I end up probably locking myself in there. I'm not sure where they're heading to next, but I'm guessing my wife would not be impressed. Right, here we go. Finally found the entrance to the engine room. Watertight door there, look. It slides across in the event of an emergency. Ship's control center over here on the starboard side. And here we have the engine room. Huge engine room. And the first thing you'll notice is this sound box. So the engine is actually behind that sound box. So yeah, all of the hot air is obviously pumped out of there with fresh air pumped in. But it means the engineers on board can do their checks and everything else they need to do in relative quiet actually. And obviously don't have to worry about the heat from the engine. But yeah, this is a huge engine room. Generator over here on the port side. The pumps for the black water tanks. But yeah, look, I'll show you in the window. Look, you can still see the engine. But yeah, it's the first time I've been on a boat, especially an explorer yacht, where the engine is actually behind the sound box. But if you've seen that before, let me know. It's definitely not something I come across that often. There's one of the uh, exits out of the engine room up there. Of course, we have the prop shaft underneath that cowling. And behind there, we have the shaft alley. So when that is open, obviously you can see the shaft heading all the way to the transom. But again, that is a watertight compartment. And you can see, look, when that needs to shut, you're gonna get no water ingress through there in an emergency. But yeah, check this out. It's really split over two levels as well. Which is very impressive. Look, another telegraph over there. The traditional telegraph that was on the boat when she was originally built back in 1969. But look, so the sound box is actually open so I can show you the Caterpillar engine. Yeah, check that out. In case you were wondering, Asteria is also equipped with a get home engine. This auxiliary power system is designed to kick in if the main engine ever fails, which is very unlikely, but it ensures that she can still make it back to port safely. It's a crucial feature for an explorer yacht like this, especially when venturing to remote, far flung destinations where reliability is key.
But what do you think of this engine room and have you come across a sound box before on a private boat? If you have, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me on board. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around as much as I have. Uh, it really is a very, very interesting, very capable explorer yacht, really rich history. Uh, and it's been an honor to come on board. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner for allowing me to come on board and shoot this footage and to the captain and to the crew uh, for having me on board and the fantastic food and everything else. I really do appreciate it. If you are interested in chartering this boat or finding out more about this vessel, then please don't forget to click on the link that I'll leave pinned in the comments. I'll leave a link in the video description as well. As many of you know, I have teamed up with a well-known charter broker. So if you are interested in chartering this boat, I personally can help you do that. If you wanna reach out to me, then follow the link in the video description and the link in the comments as well. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact with me. But until next time, fair winds and following seas. It is also worth pointing out that at the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, this beautiful vessel is currently listed for sale. If you'd like to find out more, you know what to do. Click on the link pinned in the comments and reach out to me 